Welcome back to Security Onion Essentials. In this session, we're going to look at our final workflow, detection engineering. Now, detection engineering is the process of developing technical means for uncovering malicious activity or even misconfigurations that could lead to uh, malicious activity or compromise. And really the first step in this process is detection gap, is realizing that there is a gap in your detection. Now this could be from a formal process, uh, gap analysis, or more likely it's from an informal connection somewhere. Uh, for instance, from the lessons learned of a recent incident. So once you've worked through and understood uh, the detection gap itself, the next step in the process is configuring the detection pipeline. Um, and this phase focuses on um, figuring out what data you need to get into Security Onion so that you can uh, so that you can alert off of it. Right? This could mean um, put standing up a new sensor um, in a segment in your network that wasn't there previously. Could also mean uh, shipping Windows event logs from another set of servers that you weren't shipping logs from before. Whatever, whatever you need to do to, uh, to close that detection gap from a data perspective, the underlying data, that's at what that configuring the detection pipeline is. Uh, that could also mean parsing, right? Making sure that data is parsed correctly um, as it gets into Security Onion. So once we have visibility on the data itself, now we can actually write and test our detection. It could be uh, writing a Syracuse snort rule, maybe a Zeek script, um, or in what we'll see in just a minute, writing a Sigma signature uh, for a playbook. Um, part of that is testing that detection. And then once, uh, once that process has worked through and the test is succeeding, moving that over to production, all right? And tuning, right? It's gonna be extremely rare that you, uh, once you move your detection over into production that you're gonna be able to let it sit for the next year and not have to tune it at all. Um, certainly you, you may need to tighten up the detection logic a little bit more or loosen it, just depending on what you're seeing once you've actually moved it into production. All right. Now this process uh, can be implemented in a number of different ways inside Security Onion. Like I mentioned, you could use this process to uh, to write a new Syracuse rule. Um, but in this session, we are going to be focusing on implementing this process specifically using a Security Onion playbook. And there are three outputs from this process that are really critical for playbook. The first one is an objective. When we write a new detection uh, specifically for playbook, we want to be able to make sure that we have uh, context around what we're doing and why. What does, this, uh, what does this detection look for? Why is it looking for it? Give me some, uh, give me some perspective, some, uh, some context. From the time that you've actually written the detection and put it into production, maybe six months later when you're having to go back and do some further tweaking on it, hopefully, uh, hopefully you've slept in that six months, right? Um, and so you may have uh, forgotten exactly what you were doing and why, um, and or possibly you've moved on and transitioned off the team and there's someone else that is looking over the detection, being able to have uh, a clearly documented objective is going to be really key for your detection. The second output from that process is a machine query. Um, and again, this could look different, but it, depending on the situation, but what we're going to be looking at today is specifically using playbook, which we need an Elasticsearch query for that. Elasticsearch is what we use in the backend for Security Onion. So we need the actual machine query that is going to implement that objective, right? So that's that machine query. Finally is the next steps. Once we actually have moved this detection into production and we have alerts that have been generated from the detection, what are the next steps? Um, how do I validate it? Uh, how, do I, um, you know, how do I start remediating it? Um, what are the next steps? And I find this to be really, really uh, important because I'm sure we've all been there where we're looking, staring at an alert. We're not familiar with the malware family 
in the title of the alert. And so then we try to dig into the rule itself and figure out what it's looking for. Then we may need to go do some research on a blog and figure out what exactly is going on here and what I need to do to go check to see if uh, something has really been compromised, right? And so being able to put those, that kind of information both in the objective and next steps, I think is gonna be really key for the analyst that has to work through these alerts to be able to quickly and efficiently triage and remediate as necessary. So those are the three key outputs from that process we just talked about for, uh, for specifically for playbook. So we're gonna take objective, the machine query, and next steps, and that's what makes up a play in playbook. Again, we have this application called playbook, and inside it are plays or detection plays, and each of these plays has an objective, the machine query that we need, and the next steps. Now certainly there's other uh, relevant metadata about the play, um, but the three key pieces here are objective, machine query, and next steps. I want to give credit where credit is due and these concepts and specifically playbook itself was inspired by a book that was published a couple of years ago called crafting the infosec playbook feel free to check it out if uh, these topics are of interest to you all right so enough theory let's go ahead and see what this looks like inside playbook in security onion All right, so I'm starting out logged into the Security Onion console, and I'm gonna come over here to Playbook. And we'll see that uh, there are a number of things going on here. On the far right hand side, we have uh, a way to filter some of the different plays. Right now it's on the default where it's showing all the different plays. And there are a lot of different plays that we already have uh, created inside Playbook for you. Um, so we'll talk about that more in just a minute, but we do pre-create uh, a number of plays. If we look at one of these, uh, there is a bit of metadata about the play, but I want to focus on the three uh, aspects that we were just talking about a second ago. That first one is the objective of the play right here. So network shares with loose access controls are common places that leak sensitive information. This play proactively looks for newly shared resources that likely contain sensitive data. Follow-up will be needed to confirm that appropriate access control is in place. All right, so this gives us a little bit of context about what this play is looking for and why. Next is the machine query needed for the play. And that's under the Elastalert config. We see this is the actual Elasticsearch query needed for this detection play. Uh, if you're familiar with Elastalert, we do use Elastalert in the background uh, for Playbook. Finally, our next steps, if we open up Sigma, which again, we'll talk about in just a second, scroll all the way down, we'll see tasks. There are two next steps, check share permissions and contact system slash service owner. Uh, we'll see where these come into play and why they're relevant in just a minute uh, when we create our own play, okay? So those are the three key parts of a play. Now, again, there's lots of other metadata about the play, the status, the priority, title, author, level, playbook. Um, but the three parts are, that I just showed you to me are the most important. If we come back, to be clear, all of these plays that we have pre-created, not all of them have uh, like next steps or, um, or a very clear objective. Um, but I would urge you as you look at writing your own um, detection plays to really strive for those three key aspects, uh, specifically the objective and next steps. So with that in mind and um, a quick overview of playbook, uh, let's go ahead and set up a scenario and walk through actually uh, the process that we just talked about. And the scenario is this. Uh, in the aftermath of an incident, it's become clear that your team um, missed the intrusion um, be, uh, early on uh, because of a, a detection gap. Specifically, uh, local accounts were being created on Windows servers and being used for persistence um, as well as lateral movement. 
what we're going to do is walk through that process with that scenario and build out a new detection specifically for when local accounts are created on Windows systems. So the first one, uh, the first part of that process is detection gap, which we just talked about. The second is uh, developing your detection pipeline, right? We're making sure that we've got the data that we need in Security Onion. I'm gonna assume for the sake of uh, just the demo that we've, we've got this already. If I come over to Hunt and I actually search for event code 4720 and I do have a result here. So this is a Windows event log from the security event channel, event ID 4720. That event ID is generated when a local user is created on the system. And so again, for the sake of the demo, we'll assume that we've now started uh, shipping Windows event logs specifically from our Windows servers um, and they're in Security Onion and they're parsed correctly. If we drill down in here, we'll see that we've got uh, we've got data parsed out. Okay, Windows event ID and some of the other data here. Okay, so we've got our uh, we've got our target log that we want to generate an alert when we see this. Right, whenever a new local account is created or event ID forty seven twenty. Uh, whenever we see that event ID, we want to generate an alert with our play. So let's go over to Playbook and click on Sigma Editor. And I'm going to paste the play that I already created in here. Uh, if you're not familiar with Sigma or YAML, this may look a little overwhelming. Um, I completely understand. First of all, uh, Sigma. So Sigma is what we use to generate plays. If we look at our documentation, just click on this documentation link. That will bring you to creating a new play. Little blurb here about Sigma rules from uh, Sigma's GitHub repository. Sigma is a generic and open signature format that allows you to describe relevant log events in a straightforward manner. The rule format is very flexible, easy to write, and applicable to any type of log file. So that could mean a Zeek log, that could mean um, a Wazoo, Windows event log, Sysmon log, whatever it may be. The main purpose of this project is to provide a structured form in which researchers or analysts can describe their once developed detection methods and make them shareable with others. All right. So another way that they put it uh, in their documentation is that just like we have uh, snort or Siricata rules, um, and just like we have uh, Yara rules for files, right? Sigma rules are for logs. So it's the same type thought process here. And uh, certainly if you're not familiar with Sigma and want to learn more, um, you can read through our documentation. You can also check out their repository, which has some guides on uh, the Sigma specification and how to write Sigma rules. So coming back to our play here, uh, let me just briefly walk through what this looks like. Again, Sigma rules are written in YAML. We do have syntax highlighting here. Uh, the description is our objective. All right. So this play looks for new account creations on Windows systems, specifically for event ID 4720. Accounts can be used to maintain persistence. These accounts are either created by the attacker or are legitimate, like service accounts. Either way, Creation of accounts should be tracked and verified. Event ID 4720 is generated when a user account is created. So that's our objective. Now the actual machine query we need is uh, written in this, this log source and detection section right here. Again, this is specific to Sigma. I'll show you what happens in just a minute, um, but this is actually what generates. You'll see we talk about event ID 4720. I'll show you in just a second why this matters, all right? Finally, our third is next step, so tasks. When this play generates alerts, um, what should the analyst do? So the first one is, does the username conform to our naming standard? Uh, so does, you know, some, some places have a particular naming schema for uh, service accounts, for admin accounts, for normal user accounts? Um, if it doesn't conform to that, then continue to step two. Um, go ahead and contact the system service owner for remediation. So this may be a tip off that this may not be a legitimate account 
or if it is legitimate, it needs to be uh, checked to, uh, you know, renamed according to uh, the internal schema. There's certainly a lot more that you could do here, right? But between the tasks and the objective, that should give the analyst a starting point for what this play is looking for, why, and how to analyze it once, uh, once we see an alert created. So this is great, Josh, but how in the world do we get from this to an actual play and get alerts from it? Well, I'm glad you asked. We click on convert and uh, what's gonna happen in the background is playbook is going to take this log source and detection clause and going to convert it with our field mappings into this Elasticsearch query. Specifically, we're looking for that winlog.channel security and event.code security 4720. Now we could change this just to show you. 4721, click on convert, and uh, that'll change the query. But we do want to keep it at 4720, so let me click convert. And we need to test that our target log uh, will come up when we use this query. So I'm going to click on copy and come over to hunt. And I'll paste this query in hunt hit enter, and we should see the two logs that I have uh, in Elasticsearch, which I do, which this is good. This means that this, uh, that this detection is valid. Uh, if I change that to 4721, I would get no results because I don't have any of those logs in, uh, in my environment, right? So we know this detection is going to alert on the logs that we have in the environment. So from now, I can go back to playbook. I can say create play from Sigma. And it's gonna take just a couple seconds to go ahead and uh, convert that over again and then create the play in playbook. You can see um, that playbook pulled out the title and the author and some of the other metadata about the play. I also pulled out the objective, the Elastalert configuration, which looks familiar. And finally, we have our next steps uh, down here under tasks, which again, we'll see in just a minute why that matters. All right, so we have, we've, we've done our third phase in the detection engineering process, right? We've created and tested our detection. Now it's time to actually move this into production because right now we just created the play, but you can see that the status is draft. That means that it's not actually going to get any alerts if it sees uh, any of those event IDs. So uh, we're gonna click on edit, change the status from draft to active, click on submit. And what this does is this uh, moves that last alert configuration into production. And now Security Onion is gonna start running that query. Last alert runs every three minutes. Uh, so it's gonna start looking for those logs uh, every three minutes, all right? Now again, for this demo, I've got alert already generated so I can show you what that looks like. If you would implement this in production and you get an alert generated from this play, here's what that will look like. If I come over to alerts and scroll down, you see that we have event.module, we have our Siricata, our Osekarwazu alerts. If you scroll all the way down, we'll see that we have a playbook alert. So user account created on Windows. We'll drill down into that. There's some, uh, some metadata about um, the alert in here. We can also, or it gives us the event itself, right? The data itself about the event. Um, it also gives us um, a link to the play. So we could right click and go to that play and it would bring up um, this, oops, excuse me. It would bring this up so we could look into more about what's going on why was this alert generated? If we want to actually create a case, this is an issue, I need to go check on this. We can click on the escalate button and that's going to create a case in the hive. This is where tasks come into play. When we have that case created just right here in the hive, user account created on Windows, if we click on that case, uh, we'll see that we already have tasks that need to be done for this case. We, so I'll be able to say, I'm gonna start this, this task. Does the username conform to a, uh, our naming schema? Um, I can add my task log. No, it doesn't. I need to go ahead and contact the system owner and go from there. 
So again, this this is really to me this is really important. Excuse me, because you get to you get the whole chain of events here, right? I've created the play, I've got the objective, um, and then once I get the alert, I can create a case from it, and I've actually got all that data right here in my case. I've got context, I've got the machine query, I've got the event itself that generated the alert, and I have next steps. So from an analyst perspective, I can drop right in here to the case and start quickly and efficiently working this case and doing what I need to do to keep my organization and my users uh, safe. So that is in a real, real brief uh, walk through both detection engineering and playbook. So if we kind of come back here full circle, excuse me, we talked about the detection engineering process and then how the outputs of those process, the objective, the machine query, and the next steps are really key components to a detection play in Playbook. Then I came over here, I demoed Playbook for you. I actually created a play uh, for event ID 4720 for a Windows environment. We moved that play into production. I showed you what an alert looks like, escalated that to the hive, and showed you how those next steps come into that case in the hive. All right, so lots of moving pieces here, but hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how this all works together and I think how powerful it will be in uh, with you in your environment. So that's it for detection engineering and our final workflow, workflow number three. Thanks again, and I'll see you on our next session.